<clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here on the show to talk about um, some NBA uh, news here. So let's get right into it. So Kendrick Perkins uh, gave his thoughts on the Miami Heat. And he said, end quote, I don't see the Heat getting past the first round of the Eastern Conference. Perk saying this is great news for Heat's pan- Heat fans. He says this every year and they end up making it past the first round. Perkins says this every year, I swear. I mean, yeah, they be- y'all said y'all said this last year too. Oh, they ain't beating the Bucks in the first round. They beat the Bucks four in the last year. They could definitely beat. The Cavs are- would smoke them though, because the Cavs are that good this year. They lost key players though, so this team's different than last year. They lost some key players with Gabe Vincent, uh, a key player. They just always seem to find a way, but I think this year could be different. They could, but they could easily say beat Milwaukee again this year. If they played in the first round, especially with Doc Spolstra coaching mismatch, uh, Milwaukee's not as good defensively. If they played in Milwaukee again in the first round this year, I think they could beat them. But I don't know if they'd go any farther than that. I, th- I think they lost some key players from last year, uh, last year's team, especially with Gabe Vincent. Uh, technically, and kind of Max Struess probably missed that three point shooting, and Max Struess. So, yeah, that's uh, my thoughts on what Kendrick Perkins said. Uh, Darwin Ham, Darwin Ham. Uh, he believes that Spencer Dinwiddie's size, defensive capabilities on the ball, and varied offensive talent may lead him to being a part of the closing lineups alongside D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves occasionally. Eyes emoji. They at Dan Wokey Sports. Defensive capabilities. Okay, bro. Also, he loves his three-guard lineups. If he's not playing at his best, his defense is actually... If he's playing at his best, his defense is not that bad. We'll see if he does that, though, if he basically plays at his best. But his defense... Yeah, defensive capabilities. Okay, Darwin Ham. How is this man still employed? Three-guard lineup, putting the nail in the coffin. The dude hasn't played a single second yet, and he's already planning on running three-yard lineups. Darwin Ham trying to convince us that Den Shitty is good is like, uh, is based as a meme is of like Mike Brown having that uh, computer at the press conference when uh, he got a joke against Milwaukee. Dude's literally fucking dog shit. Just relax. Let's see how you how he plays and how he fits with your team. So Lonnie Walker said he enjoyed the Super Bowl halftime performance, but he was not a fan of Usher touching Alicia Keys. I loved it. I called my mom. I called my best friend. I'm, but I'm a little upset because you can't be touching Alicia Keys. I mean, that's somebody's wife, man. But he's, I thought he was doing too much. I mean, I don't know if I would have done the same thing. I'm not just going to put my hands on a woman. Especially a married woman. I don't know. He, he just needs to chill out, but... but... I don't know why this is fucking news. I mean, Alicia Keys is pretty fine. Can't lie. Can't lie, Alicia Keys. So you can get it. Uh, anyways. Um, Grant Williams. Grant Williams, a former Maverick. He says... Grant Williams said he enjoys playing with the Charlotte Hornets. And quote, it's great to get a win for the city and play for the jersey that's across your chest, not on your back. Everybody touched the ball. We trusted one another. Is he is he really trying to throw shots at Luca for ball hogging? He got plenty of touches. He was breaking wide open shots while getting most touches of his career. Yeah, he basically call he's basically calling Luca out. Grant just isn't good. He's a good player. Simple as that. At the end of the day. You've played one game, buddy. You played one damn game with this with this team, and you beat the Memphis Grizzlies. The, you beat the G League Grizzlies. Calm down, buddy. No one wanted you in Dallas. That's why you had to fucking go to um, Charlotte. Because nobody wanted your ass. Um, rival teams uh, believe that Atlanta could potentially chose to keep Jante Murray uh, rather than Trey Young this offseason per at the Stein line. Perhaps the more significant reason why trade 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 talk 
has a more tangible feel than ever before. There appears to be a true market forming for Young, for really the first time in his six seasons of the Hawks as as a Hawk. Period. Quote. That would be a huge, huge mistake by Atlanta. But it's like, but it is uh, likewise believed in some corners late that he would have a interest in South Texas as a destination man. I think that's his best option for success, having a big who can cover up for his miskies on defense with a seven foot four giant. Wimby and Trey, that would be cinema. Imagine that happens, but I think Trey Young would have a bigger trade price. So maybe they want to try and get more because they think they can get more from Trey Young instead of DeJounte Murray. But imagine if the Spurs went there got Trey Young, man. You could have that Trey young Wimby combination. And Wimby can make up for the defensive miskeys because the dude's like a seven, is a 7 foot 4 giant. Now we're going to talk about my Warriors with Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson. He, he's finally accepting it, man. Uh, he says he's open to a reduced role if it means staying with the Warriors. There's nothing wrong with that. I'll be 35 next year. At 35, come off the ACL and an Achilles tear. And still have an ability to be a really good player. Maybe not the guy who scored 60 and 3 quarters and scored an NBA record. 37 points. Who scored 60 and 3 quarters and scored an NBA record. 37 points in a, in a quarter. But still a great threat out there. I have my one game after Reggie and Ray. And those guys were incredibly effective until they late 30, so I plan on kind of following that mold. That mold. I think this is one of the most self-aware statements I've seen a player make. Because, you know, he's, he's 35, man. People don't realize Clay Thompson's 35. He's coming off the ACL, the Achilles. I think he can be, uh, I think he can be like that Ray, Heat era Ray Allen role. Can it really accept that role? I think he might. I mean, he, he's not even the closing lineups. He just needs better shot selection. He's not even the closing lineups some games. But I feel like he's realized he's washed. He's not getting the money he wants. But hopefully uh, for Clay, this uh, unlo unlocks him. And hopefully uh, Clay Thompson now has better shot selection. Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart thinks they could beat up Ryan Archidiacono and TJ McConnell fight. I beat, I'd beat the shit out of Ryan. Man, they talk anything but basketball. Someone serious. Who let these two start a podcast? Two mystery teams believe that LeBron James would consider signing with them if they were to draft Bronny James per at the sideline. And quote, I know of at least two teams on the NBA map that will believe that believe LeBron James would consider signing with them at a, at far less than fifty one point four million if Bronny James is on the roster. There might be more. This is absolutely wild. Uh, in my honest uh, basketball opinion here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Bronny is an NBA caliber, but may, but maybe worth drafting to get LeBron. Like, yeah, I mean, I don't think he's NBA caliber right now. He's only a freshman, and I think he can get better. He just needs to be more aggressive uh, for USC. I don't think he's an NBA player right now. But who are these two uh, mystery teams here? The Cavs? Uh, maybe the Knicks and Heat are the two teams, maybe. I just don't think Bronny James is an NBA caliber player right now. That's not to say he can't be. It's just he's looked good some games. It's just sometimes he's not. He's just too too passive. He's just not too not that aggressive. That's my only complaint. So Jalen Brown called out Duncan Robinson after the game last night, uh, yesterday, where he tried to hurt Duncan Robinson, could have broke his arm. I found like Duncan Robinson knew what he was doing there, trying to get tangled up. I don't know what he was trying to do, but I bet you he won't do it again. So he kind of threatened to break his arm. It, it sounded like, but I remember Duncan literally out punked you on uh, your own floor in Game Seven of the playoffs last year, getting paid. Who's getting paid three hundred million to get outplayed by Caleb and Duncan? Like that's tr that's terrible. Like the dude literally tried to hurt, break his arm. It felt like. Imagine having beef with Duncan Robinson. Jesus Christ. That's 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 all-time low. Kevin Garnett says, Those who think the Lakers are talking here are fucking delusional. Let, Ke let Kevin Garnett cook. The Lakers are the definition of mid this year. Some news from Woj. ESPN sources. Charlotte Lawrence, president of basketball operations, Mitch Kochak. 
Kupchak is stepping down becoming an organizational advisor, clearing way for franchise to begin immediate search for a new head of basketball operations, period. I think it's a good move. I think it's a good move for the Hornets. Uh, amongst several league executives to be considered in process, New York or New Orleans GM uh, Trojan Langdon, Brooklyn's assistant GM Jeff Peterson, Cleveland GM Mike Gainsey, Philadelphia GM Elton Brand, and others sources tell ESPN. <laughs> Jeff Peterson's, I think, a name to watch. Brooklyn's assistant GM. But yeah, uh, he's moving to an advisor role as um, Mitch Kupchak. I see anything from uh, some sham. See after we got through a thing there from Lowe's. See anything from Shams Charania. Uh, Miami Heat guard Terry Rozier has avoided any major injury. His MRI, MRI today showed a sprain right knee. It will be evaluate, evaluated uh, week to week, sources tell, at the Athletic at Stadium. So, so at least it won a major knee injury. Uh, Miami Heat guard Josh Richardson, Richardson has suffered a dislocated right shoulder. He is expected to be re-evaluated in a few weeks. Sources tell at the Athletic at Stadium he's averaged 10 points in a return season Miami, including 40% from three-point range over the last two months. So, that's a tough loss. Uh, two key injuries there. Um, New Orleans Pelicans guard Dyson Daniels suffered a meniscus tear in his left knee and sideline indefinitely, sources tell at the Athletic at Stadium. Daniels has been a key rotation player for the Pelicans, averaging 21.9 minutes, 5.5 points per game, and 1.4 steals a game, top 10 in the NBA. Lockdown defender, he's going to be missed. So hopefully it's better soon. So, um. Yeah, the Lakers got Spencer D. Wayne a $1.5 million deal, using the remainder of their mid level exception for the remainder of the season. So, yeah. So they got Spencer D. Wayne. So that's all for the NBA. So until next time, Mike Lott. Peace.